Hello Internet, Ben here with another update for my little vector-based uh, gamey game. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember what I had said about it before, but let me just tell you what, I, what I've got going on now. So we have dungeon generation of a sort. It, it generates a series of rooms using one algorithm I made, kind of connected, just like where it thinks they should be, and then it goes and actually places the room and connects them with lines. Um, and there can be different restrictions based on things I specify. So I can say, I want the room to be really big, or I want the room to have a fire stick in it, or I want the room to have, um, you know, whatever. Uh, and what kinds of exits? Does this room have exits that are, you know, such that we could go uh, straight up and down, or left and right, or in any direction, or whatever? And it, it goes through all the rooms and, and finds random ones it needs and kind of pieces it together. So it's it's randomly piecing together the game from uh, handmade segments, and I can show you what those segments look like. Um, we've got this more or less centered. So here's where it actually, well, you know, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So that's, here's the JSON. So start up at the top. So here's what uh, we've gotten in, in a JSON format, because I want anyone to be able to mess with this, right? Like when I, supposing I, I make and release this game, which I would like to do, but I don't want to make any promises. I never know what's going to happen. Um, but supposing I make and release this, I would love it if people could modify it to add their own kinds of rooms or whatever. So that's what all these are. You have to give some some meta information and I will will absolutely need some sort of documentation on what are allowed values because otherwise it freaks out and crashes and dies. I mean, you know, that's something else to improve too. That's polish, right? That's polish for later. Um, but you can specify these rooms and you can kind of see what's happening with exits pointed in different directions because that's important. Um, I didn't want to assume that anything on the right edge was a right exit because I might have like L-shaped rooms or, or other shapes, um, you know, like concave uh, sh shaped rooms or other things. So, but anyway, you can define the rooms. You can also set up variables. So like that room you saw where we had, I think was glass here um, and there was stone here. You're allowed to say, well, I'm gonna have this variable A and I want all A's to be one of these three. And this is glass, uh, the slash. Uh, this is a wall, this is a floor, and so it says, okay, I've decided for this instance of the room, A is going to be a wall, okay, these are all walls, whatever, so you can see, so you can have random variables within rooms, which which I think is a useful uh, feature. Um, you could even do doors or something that way, I mean, you shouldn't do that with A, because that would do something horrible, but, you know, we could say that only sometimes we want to allow this to be a door or something, whatever. All those things are possible, any symbol is possible there, I, I haven't used them in that way. This is this is a lie. I don't, I don't want to do this actually anymore. Um, this should be because because dollar was going to mean treasure and exclamation mean boss, but I'm actually going to leave that up to the game. So what I've been indicating is whether or not the tile in the very center is a free tile to place whatever you want, um, whatever not whatever you the person making these wants, but whatever the game decides it wants uh, based on some things which we'll talk about later. So anyway, we've got various types of rooms like this, right? I've tried to make some interesting shapes, like here's one where it's a big plus shape, but you could have these little hallways on the corners, and I think we may have seen one of those as well. Um, can I find the game? Whoops, whoops, that was it. Okay, here we go. I think we even had one of those. Anyway, so you get the point. Um, what I want to do, and I, I can't remember if I mentioned this in... No, I didn't. Um, so. A long time ago, I saw this video by uh, Mark Brown on YouTube. He does this series called Game Maker's Toolkit. If you haven't watched it, you absolutely should. It's super useful. Um, and uh, and I'm, I don't think we had one of those rooms. But anyway, he did an episode on how the Mario games have been being made, the 3D ones in particular, um, and I guess in particular, particular Super Mario 3D World. Um, and it apparently follows, and actually here, let me... I have it open still in the tab because I was watching. So here is, um, you can see whatever shortcuts I have, I don't care. Uh, so here's this episode. Go find this. I'll put a link in, in the description as well. Um, and in this, in particular, th this is perfect. I actually paused it here intentionally because I knew I'd probably want to show this. Um, he's showing off this, this mechanic where w when you jump, these tiles flip. Um, so, you know, as Mario jumps, the tiles flip to the other side, and then he runs around and the next time he jumps for whatever reason, um, they'll flip again. Um, there you go. Right. So, and here in particular, sorry, let's go back. 
how do you how do you properly introduce this? And and if you've seen um, sequelitis uh, talk about Mega Man and other people too, I mean other people have talked about this. Um, they talk about how you first introduce the, con the the concept in a safe environment, then you you know to be a nice game designer, then you would go on to do something horrible. So here is the introduction where you have ground underneath you, so it's safe. Later on, you're doing a similar thing, but there's you know empty space below you. So if you fail, now you're going to die, right? The the stakes have been raised. But more than just kind of like introduce in a safe way, and then now you have to play it in a in a you know for realsies. Um, Mark Brown talks about the the game design philosophy of I don't remember the name of the guy because it's Japanese, but and those names just you know <laughs> they don't stick in my mind in the same way because that's not a language I know. Um, but his um, philosophy is is based on this four you know, he's calling it four step level design. It's based on these four panel comics, and the idea is first you introduce the concept. Then you expand upon it, develop it. Then you do some sort of twist, and then you have a resolution. And I don't know what examples are in comics. Like it's hard for me to think of what a comic example would be, but I'm sure for a story, you know, I don't know, introduce a couple characters, escalates to a romance. Oh my goodness, there's a twist, but then there's a resolution, right? I mean, you can see how that works for a story. Um, and but he said, the the game designer guy has said, let's do this for for game mechanics in, in games, and that's what this video by Mark Brown talks about, and you should totally watch it. I have been replaying this game today to try and find more than the examples he gave, and I was a little disappointed to find that, like, Mark Brown has picked the best examples. If you go through and actually play the game, I feel like a lot of the examples are weaker, or even almost don't even follow this pattern, where you're like, I didn't really notice the twist, you know, or, you know, and maybe there technically was one, but I don't know. So. Whatever, I, I'm, that's a whole other debate you could, you could get into if you wanted. I would love to really try and focus on that in this game. That's the whole point, right? Why is this related to my game? I would love to introduce a mechanic, expand upon that mechanic, add a twist, and then at the end, you know, do a little optional interaction with that mechanic if you want a goodie before you go down the stairs, right? It's going to still be procedurally generated, as a roguelike would be, you know, using these sorts of layouts. Um, but one of the things I've put into the rooms is what's the mechanic and what's the step? This is the name of the um, the comics that I, I think I think it was, but, but the, the, the name of this four panel thing. I can't say Japanese. What would that be? Kisho Tenketsu? Let's just pretend. So, and, and the stage here is this is the development stage. So this is where we've had, we're having fire sticks and it's it's in a little it's a little harder now than before and the reason is because if we have a fire stick in the middle here it's going to span the whole distance of the room um and i think i showed fire sticks in a previous video i feel embarrassed for not remembering it's been a few days um so anyway you you, you might imagine then it's like oh tight quarters it reaches the whole thing whereas for the introductory sort of um thing with fire sticks we would give you more room and i don't think i've even made a, a thing like that so so I've, I've listed out several mechanics and this this episode is going to be a, a little game design talk. So let's look at something else. I've got a tab. So this is an old mechanic I've known about for a long time. Not mechanic, sorry, but an old game design idea that I've known about for a long time. Um, and I and I tried to incorporate it a little bit in Mysterious Space, but um, I don't know. I, it wasn't a like a like a, a a real focus for me. I could have done it more, right? Um, and this is again something I think when I was looking at this again and thinking about this again and rewatching this uh, video about the, you know, introduce, develop, twist, resolution, it occurred to me that that's very similar to to these graphs. So what this is, if you're not familiar, is the ideal for games, movies, roller coaster rides, a fancy dinner, anything of what you want of of over time the intensity of the experience and, and that's not you know for games you might think of that as being the difficulty but it doesn't have to be this can be the spectacle of the game right and and the spectacle is really what then goes in with like I don't know with eating you could have the first course and you're like whoa this is the kind of meal I'm gonna get into right this is your your first hit and then it's like oh, now you've got the and then we finish with a wonderful dessert you know <laughs> and that's kind of a silly example maybe I don't know why I went with a food thing um, but you know, for a roller coaster, for a book, for a movie, and people have plotted this famously to the Star Wars movies of like, you know, the introduction. You've got this crazy fight scene right on A New Hope, where the I mean, there's videos all about this you can find. I don't, I don't need to ramble about it, but you can find charts that that show this kind of progression for Star Wars, for Harry Potter, for anything big and famous. Um, you know, that people care to discuss how it works out. 
and this guy, and you know, this article is talking about, oh, here's what a messy structure would look like. That's not very good. Here's what you would want, like a TV show, how that kind of works. You keep escalating and, and having these cliffhangers at the end of an episode, etc. And this kind of shows how this concept can be um, self-similar or, or fractal or, I don't know, don't tell mathematicians I'm mixing those two terms, they'd be upset. But you can imagine, like, th this says it's for a level, what your experience is over the course of a single level, but this could also be the experience over the whole game, like, say, from Mario World to Mario World. In World 1, you're going, whoa, what is this new game? It's Mario 3, I'm so excited. Um, you know, level two, three, four. Then you go, oh, desert world, this is crazy. Oh, they've got new mechanics. That's kind of exciting. And again, it's not necessarily difficult, but it's the excitement of the of the new environment. And then they start ramping up the difficulty. You end with the Bowser ship. Now you're in like, what? What is this giant world? Whoa, you know. And and you and you have the same thing. And then within each level, though, you know, this same thing happens. Oh, what's the thing? Oh, we've got Goomba shoes. That's super interesting. You know, it's like, okay, now we're doing Goomba shoes. Now we have to jump over pits. And there's so much things and now we win, hurrah, with with a Goomba shoe, or here's, I don't know, that weird, uh, the huge fish that can eat you, right? So within each level, and then the whole war the, the whole pro progression across all of the worlds, and, you know, and maybe you could even say the thing across many games, I don't know. I mean, but, I, but the point is you can see this as being um, a, a self-similar thing, and, and people even talk about getting this down to, I saw something about, like, what what it's like for each shot of a weapon like in a first person shooter of you have that initial anticipation where you're going to shoot and then you have like the, the the recoil at the end and the big explosion and, and the death right and the little steps so people have talked about how you can incorporate this at every single level of a game and make it awesome and it was just interesting to me that the four panel design seems to mimic this even here four humps right you introduce the concept okay, cool, you get a little break maybe in between, you know, up here, what's over here? You've got a little break right after you've been introduced to the concept. Oh, now you have to do it a little harder. Now there's a crazy, crazy twist. Now you do it at the end with a... Um, and actually, really, the end is probably down here because it's much more uh, low-key. But you're about to win the level. Sound, I mean, that's exciting, you know? Um, but the, but the four-panel thing fits perfectly here. Something else I've noticed is another game design thing is the concept of flow. I think a, a wiggly... Well, no, this is, this is pretty good. Let's, I don't know what this is about. Anyway, so this is just an image search. Again, you can search for game design flow. Difficulty is probably another good word instead of challenge. But the idea is you don't want, if the player's skill advances too quickly, they get bored. If the difficulty advances too quickly, they get, you know, upset. Anxious is what they keep saying here, but I would say, like, frustrated. But whatever, sure. Um, and you really want to try and keep the player in this flow. And I think that's precisely related, right? This is the flow of game difficulty. This is the flow of your interest in the game. It follows a similar thing, and this matches well. I don't know. I, I, I hadn't really thought of these things as... These two things, these things I had noticed overlap. I was like, this is the same concept, but for different aspects of gameplay. But realizing that this fits in there, too, was really interesting to me. And, and I don't know, maybe I'm looking too much into things, or, or maybe this is... Maybe other people have already noticed this, and I'm, and I'm slow to, pay, to catch on. I don't know, but... It seems very convenient, like, by following this pattern, this four-step level design, and maybe this is why it has been so successful, when you do this design, you will automatically get this, you will automatically get this, and, and these two things are known to be engaging, right, of, of having the progression of a level follow this interest curve and having the difficulty follow this flow channel, you know you've got people engaged, and, and I think this automatically gets you there, so that's really cool. So. I didn't mean to, like, send myself down this crazy path, and I hope that this has been interesting to you, but, again, that's the idea that I want for for this game. I would love to, and, and I've written out tons of mechanics. I mean, you know what, here, I might as well show you. Um, there's no reason not to. Whoops, sorry, I've got this on another screen with more things open than I want. All right, so, some mechanics. You can have icy terrain, fire sticks, lights that turn on or off, spiked walls, wind, keys and doors. That's a mechanic. Um, and actually one I haven't written here because I wrote it on my phone while I was on the way to work one day, um, of, of snakes as a type of enemy because certainly an enemy, and it, it doesn't, these are all kind of environmental hazards. Um, I don't know why that was the first thing I was able to think of, but I was thinking, well, what about enemies or what about power-ups, you know? There's all kinds of other places that you could put these, these sorts of mechanics. So I think I'm actually going to start with snakes, which are none of the ones listed here, but it would be, oh, there's a bunch of snakes in a room, the escalation um, being that there's a guy who's throwing snakes, who's so got like a, a thing on his back, and I've already drawn the graphic for him. Um, 
you, I'll have to show it off another time. I'll show it off once he's running around and it's working. I think that might be the next video where we'll actually have the snakes, right? So he he throws little snakes out from his backpack or whatever. So okay, that you know is escalating. Then I think as the twist, I, I haven't hundred percent decided, but I think maybe stripping you of your ability to 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 attack basically with your normal weapon. I don't know if that's yeah, there, people debate whether or not you should do that to players, right? Like, that's not a thing you want to pull all the time where you're stealing people's powers. Um, but it is also known as a good way to kind of add add some more difficulty, right? Because um, you're like, whoa, my normal thing, you know, I shoot. So now you have to avoid the snakes, right? Basically would be would, would be the twist. There's snakes, but you avoid them. And they're going to have a particular weird, like, kind of angular movement pattern so that you can manipulate that. It'll make more sense when you play. It might not work out well. Right? That's another reason why I'm undecided on the twist. I think it's really going to take implementing this and seeing how it plays to know what will make a good twist. I'll have to play with it. Um, and then at the end, you know, you would get your weapon back and you can just mow down a bunch of snakes and get to the stairs, right? Um, easy. So, uh, but but exciting. Hopefully, the, the the top of that, you know, that fourth peak on the uh, on the chart, right? That's what that's what I'm going for. A cathartic. Let's blow up all the snakes now. That I have my my power back. That's the idea. So. If you want to spoil yourself, read through all this, because hopefully those will all make it in the game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was funny when I was re-watching um, this video by Mark Brown, He was because I, I I knew I wanted to do the four-panel thing. I was like, I should re-watch that video and see what he says. Um, and, and then, again, I was playing some Super Mario 3D World earlier today and trying to take notes, but finding that Mark Brown had already taken all the good parts. Um, <laughs> so there wasn't, it didn't seem like a, whole, a lot of notes to take. Um, but anyway, uh, in this video, Mark Brown is like, so you can use this in your game too. Good luck thinking up mechanics. And I was like, well, I already came up with a bunch of mechanics. It's actually not that hard. Like, I mean, these are not, none of these things are new. There are games where lights go on and off. I was thinking of Donkey Kong. I was, you know, trying to think of other games. You know, spiked walls, obviously. You know, wind, I don't know. That's not, not a hard thing. I, I already have it in Mysterious Space, so maybe that's why it came to my mind. Um, so, I mean, there's tons of mechanics you can borrow from other games that already exist. It's just a matter of thinking of, how do you introduce it nicely? How do you kind of escalate, you know, develop, whatever, expand on that idea? What's your twist? And then a resolution, which should be easy. I don't know, you just show it again, but you get to get, you know, and here it's you get the flagpole. In my game, it's you get the stairs, whatever, easy peasy. I feel like that step. And sometimes they even skip it. I notice in the Mario levels, there's, you know, you have a boss or something instead, um, which feels like a culmination. It's not really, I don't know, maybe that counts as a resolution. I don't know. Anyway, so that's it. I worry this video has gone on quite long enough. Um, but yeah, a lot of today was coding up. I wanted the level generation. I wanted to be able to move through, have it piece things together, um, you know, to, to facilitate this uh, progression of mechanics means it can't be as random as, as a lot of roguelikes, I feel, typically are, right? We have to have a little more control, a little, a little more procedure, right, in, in our procedurally generated content. So that's where the, the this sort of stuff comes in. We're going to introduce the ice mechanic here, right? Um, here we're developing the ice mechanic or, or you know, whatever. So it'll, it'll be able to put together from those steps. So I don't know, I've never done something like this before. I hope it will work out <laughs> as well as I'm hoping. Uh, I hope it will be interesting for for you guys uh, as well as for me. Um, and I hope this video has been interesting and not too long and rambly. Um, but I, I think it, I ought to be done by now, so thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, I will absolutely post when I've got snakes to murder with, with some escalation and, and maybe even a twist. Uh, until then, goodbye.